Greetings and welcome to another Lessons with Odin. On this episode, I will be showing you how to make this adorable little brick stitch bee component thingy. You can turn it into an earrings or a necklace, whatever you feel and what's your fancy. These are using the components I got from BB Craft. I did a review on them, an unboxing from stuff that they sent me, as well as a UV resin video on this stuff. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But yes, in this case, I will be showing you how to make this fantastical piece. So for this project, you will need a honeycomb bezel shaped thingy. This one is earring findings that I got on BB Craft. Anything else could work as well, but if you want to follow along, get this specific piece. I'll have a link down below. Some sort of focal dangly part. I got the little honeycomb pieces and I glued a bee on it with some UV resin. You can also fill the honeycombs with UV resin like I did in my last video. But that is what I am working with. Also some shiny, tiny little rondelles. I think these are 1 by 2 millimeters. You don't necessarily have to have something in this shape. But you'll want to stick to something not too larger than a size 11 seed bead. Speaking of, you need two colors of size 11 seed beads, one for your innards and one for your outards. So I've got this lovely mustardy color to look like the inside of a honeycomb, and I got this on the outside just because I felt like it. You'll need some dangly parts to go on the bottom. I've got some honey colored drops and a bee. I don't know if I'm going to use all of these, but this is what I got. And of course, your needle and thread. I think this is a size 12. I don't know. I found it in an unmarked jar and I'm going to use it. But you'll want to use size 12. And I'm using a 1G. I have this honey colored one in my stash. So that worked out quite nicely. Very simple. Not a lot of stuff to work with. And yeah, with all that being said, let us get started. Now, before I get to anything, I'm going to futz with my component because I don't want earrings, I want a pendant. So, I'm going to take some pliers, grab up the loop, fold it up 90 degrees, and twist it around 90 degrees. Then, with the opposite side, I'm going to form a little bit of a loop. There's not a lot to work with, so I need to really adjust how I do gonna hook it around through the little strand and then just kind of keep going with the round nose until I got it stuck in place like that and now that's ready to work with we are going to be primarily using the brick stitch in order to get our base going so so we are going to start by adding on our anchoring stitches not gonna lie this is a real pain in the ass so so, I'm going to start off by threading on two outer beads. Fold that down. I'm going to lay my thread on top of the component, like so. Pass underneath the component, and then pass up through the second bead. Keep a tight hold on your tail while you're doing this. Then you will have your start. So I'm coming out of the second bead. I'm going to pass back around through the first bead. I'm going to keep my working thread over the component. And then from here we're going to tie an overhand knot with our tail and our working thread. Then from there, I'm going to go over the component and pass my needle through the second bead. So now we have our base and a start of our brick stitch. So I'm going to add one bead, lay my thread over the bead, go under through the component and then stick your needle through the second bead. I'm going to then lay my thread over the component, bring my needle around 
underneath the component, pick up that third bead. Pull it tight and smoosh it together, and that will be the third stitch. So, you will also notice I have clipped my tail. It's going to be very irritating, so make sure you have your knot secured. Maybe put a little glue on there. Get rid of it. It's not going to be fun. So, this time I'm going to add bead number four. Pull it down. Lay my thread over the component. Go underneath. And pass up through the bead. Pull tight. And there is your fourth stitch. Once more, bead number five. Pull it all the way down. Lay your thread on top of the component. Bring your needle underneath and through the bead towards the center. Keep on doing that for a little while until you feel comfy and then like, I don't know, three or four more stitches. You might want to go all the way down to the corner. Maybe not. I don't know. It's up to you. All right, so this is what I'm looking at so far. I just went, like, one space around the corner. When you go around, the corners aren't going to really impact you that much. Um, it will in the next row, so we'll go over that later. But from here, I'm just going to do the same exact step. However, I'm going to thread on one of my shinies. Add on my shiny. Pull it all the way down. Lay my thread on top of the component. Pull my th needle underneath the component. Then pass back up through the shiny. And that is how you are going to fill your entire base. So, anywhere that you want the honey drips to appear, you add your sparkly bits. I'm going to add like two or three over on this side just to have like a sticky, gloopy quality to it. I'm going to move down and add some size 11s. Then towards the bottom, I'm going to add the majority of honey beads. I'm going to go up and around all the way over to the center here. I'm going to use the majority of outer beads. Maybe one more little dollop of honey up there. I don't know. Go with the flow and see what happens. But in any case, complete all the way around in your colors until you reach the center point back up. So that is what I ended up with in my colors. I've got a little splotch here, the majority of my bottom, and I have a little tiny splotch up there. So once you go all the way around, you're going to join the bits together. You're going to take that loose one over there. You're simply going to, your thread's coming towards the inside. You are just going to pass through the first bead you added back through the last bead and just kind of do that a couple times to secure it in place. Now we are going to swap our outards and use our innards. So I'm going to add two innard beads in the ring and start our next row of brick stitch. So I'm going to pass that all the way down my thread is coming out of a bead at the moment. What I want to do is progress by going through a thread that's in between two beads instead of a bead itself. Pass that down, and you'll kind of see we have the start of our brick stitch going. So, I'm going to pass up through that second bead, pull tight. To continue on, I'm going to add one more inner bead. Go to the next thread bridge. Pass through. Go up. The next bead and so forth. You're going to keep going all the way down until you reach a corner. Then we got to do something in order to make it nice. All right, so when you are at your corner, you're going to kind of see that there's a thread bridge mushed in between there that's a little hard to get to. We're going to completely skip that. So as soon as I add my next bead, I'm going to skip over this one and then pass through the next one over so that the beads will fit in nicer. And it also helps keep the structure of the piece because you can kind of see the ends are kind of flopping around. Skipping these corners will tighten it up and make it a little easier to work with. 
Then you're going to continue all the way around in this manner, adding to your pattern. So what that means is you're going to add, alternate between your innards and your colored honey beads, and pick a continuation of your pattern. So kind of think about how honey collects and gravity works. So with this one, you might, might want to add a bead until you reach there, and then add a couple of the honey beads down there, continue on your pattern. When you reach the next chunk, you can either start further up or go further down, depending on how much honey you want to use. Go all the way down and up. Maybe start or end a little further down. Continue with your inner beads. Maybe add another one either to the side or the front or completely ignore it. And continue on. Then you're going to join your inner pieces just like you did with the previous row. So keep on doing that and have fun with your creative process. Alright, so that is what your piece should look like. I am going to now add my big old dangly part in the center. So I'm going to channel down and kind of pick a thread bridge that is sort of kind of in the center. And I'm going to just pick it up. Actually, I want this one instead. So I'm just going to pick it up, thread on my dangly part, make, and then go back and pick up that same thread bridge so that when I pull it tight it dangles in the center. Now you're going to just keep repeating that going through the loop picking up the thread bridge where you started from and wrap around until you feel this is nice and secure. it probably take a few rounds but keep at it. And that's what we've got. Keep in mind that this is going to loosen a little bit over time with friction, so the tighter that you put it on, the longer it will last. Now, I'm going to do something a little funky over here, so from there I'm just going to pick up the bead next over and begin to travel where I want to be. Eh, yeah, B. So I'm going to kind of push the charm aside because it's going to annoy me. So traveling, I'm just going to go up and down through the innermost round until I reach where I want. And this is where I want to be. So once again, in that bead there, I'm just going to pick up the thread bridge. I'm going to add a dangly part and a honey bead and pass that through. I am going to skip over... The honeybee to pass back up through the dangly part, and just like you did with the charm, you're going to pass back through and around that thread bridge that you stuck this at, and just keep going at it until it's nice and secure until you want it. Now, you can always just stop right there, but why would you do that? Let's make this excessive. So in order to make this look a bit more gooey, I'm going to add a third and maybe even a fourth row. But I'm only going to add it right on the center where I have all of my other honey beads. You could always jump to where you want to go and travel through the beads, but why would you want to do that? That sounds like a tedious amount of work. So I simply just started a new thread where I wanted it to be. And I'm going to do exactly like I did when I started the other two rows. I'm going to move down, fill most of this. I might skip a little, pe a little parts here and there because of the way and how close this charm is. So you would skip by traveling up and down through beads just like you did here. But keep going as far as you want to go and don't forget to mind your corners, skip over threads as you need. So when you add your new rows, you're probably going to be starting a bunch of different times essentially, just to make it nice, realistic, and flowy. As you can see, I've got one chunk that I started. I skipped by traveling up and down. I started a new row and moved around until I was happy with it. Then I traveled and backed around until I'm coming out of a bead that I wanted to be for the fourth row. Now, when you're starting every chunk, you're going to be adding two beads instead of one. And when you pass around your thread bridge and you pass up through that second bead, if you continue on going forward, this little one is going to be flopping around a bit and not attached to anything, which isn't really a problem, but if it bothers you a lot, 
To anchor it, we're just going to go backwards through one, through that bead that's going to be annoying, pass down directly through the bead underneath it in the previous row, through the next one over, and then finally up through the second bead that you started from. From there, you can continue your row as you please. Now, this is cute and all, and you could stop here too, but you know what I think it needs? More goo. So, I traveled all the way down to the bottommost row. I didn't go, like, immediately to the center or all the way over, but you can feel like it if you want. It just depends on what you want to do and how asymmetrical and how much goo drops you want. So, I'm going to do this like I start a normal row. I add my two beads. My thread is currently over the metal finding. I'm going to pull it over and around, pass back through the bead that I started from. Now for these rows, we're pretty much going to disregard the fact that there is a component here and we're just going to attach our pieces from the bottom row of beads. From here, I want to anchor my first bead, so I'm just going to go backwards through the previous bead over, pass up through the first bead, pull through, go down the second bead, down through the bead across the way immediately underneath it, go forward through that bead in that same row, like so, then go up through the second bead on the row across the way, and we can continue on our path. So we will add one bead, go down through the next bead over on the row across the way, go up through the next bead along the road, and then pick up the previous bead, and keep going like that. Adding on one bead, skip forward to the next bead over, go back up through the previous bead, and pick up the bead you added. Add on another bead, go forward, pass up, go through the last bead you added, adding on another bead, go forward, pass back, then through your last bead. So, so keep going on until you have the length that you want. Also taking into consideration how drippy and stuff you want it. And then from there you can add rows based on the brick stitch. Keeping in mind how gravity flows and how drippy and gooey you want it. Keep in mind when you reach corners on this side of the finding, you don't need to skip over the corners. You can continue on and use each individual thread bridge. All right, so once you have enough goo, you're going to add some dangly parts. So, thread is coming out of a point of one of my goo globs, and I'm going to add some beads. Just like our fringy bit up here, I'm going to add an indeterminate number of honey beads. You can also put seed beads there instead if you feel like. You're going to put one dangly part and then one of another honey bead. Skip over that honey bead. Pass back through every single one of these beads once more. Then I'm going to skip over to the next bead and pull through. Going to pass back up through the previous bead and start reinforcing this once more. Once you've done that, you can travel to another section, add another dangly part, and do whatever.